Well, Enfa, thank you so much for being here with me on the Entrepreneurial Success Podcast. I can't believe we've never done this before. Why did we take so long to finally have this interview? Oh my goodness. Before we get started, why don't you introduce yourself to the audience and tell us a little bit about what you do? Oh, thank you, Henriette. It's so lovely to be here talking to you today. And um, yeah, if we've not met before, I'm Envis, Envis Baloney, and I run a sales training business and help really fabulous show-stopping women achieve all they want to achieve in business by helping them to sell more, more comfortably. I know. And this is a biggie for so many people, which is why I'm so excited that we're doing this podcast interview. Before we go into all the juicy stuff, how did you get into sales and, and why did you decide to start your own business and go down that route? What was that story like for you? Uh, do you know what? They're both quite convoluted stories, so I'll be really brief. I did criminology at uni and then as I was going for a graduate program, I fell into recruitment and I then was like, well, I'm not going to go down in salary and no bonuses. And I, I've been in sales ever since graduating, basically. And then I started my own business in 2018, but it was a travel business and it was really, really badly hit by the pandemic. You know, the, yeah, as an industry, it didn't do so well with the grounded flights and the complete travel ban. So that business came to a very abrupt halt. <laughs> and uh, and then my husband was like, you know, I'd lost all my income really quickly. And then my husband was like, you're going to need to get a job. And I was like, no way am I going to get a job. I, I, we've got the two young kids, you know, they're really, really young girls. I had to take care of them and I couldn't get a full-time job. I didn't want a full-time job and I loved running my own business. And um, I've always been a really strong seller. I've always loved selling. And it always surprised me that everybody else felt totally differently. You know, they just hate, people hate selling. And I thought, as I was driving along one day past M&S, you know, when you have like these light bulb moments and you're like, oh, I've had a good idea. It's about three minutes away from my house. I was driving along and I thought, I'm going to create a business that I wish exist to help and support women like and empower women to really sell comfortably. And by the time I was back home, like two, like three minutes later, I was thinking up names, thinking up strategies, and then the rest is history. And that was about... That was January last year. Yeah. And I mean, I've met you in beginning last year, actually, just around that time when you just started your business. And I remember the conversations we had and the growth your business had over the last two years, well, coming up to two years next year, January, is mm. incredible. And I followed you and I've seen how you've kind of gone out there and just become so much more visible. And then I do find that a lot of people say that, you know, how do you sell? How do you become visible? How do you do this? And I think that's what we're going to touch up here on today a little bit as well, which is why I'm so excited that we're finally doing this. Um, so let's talk about that a little bit. Let's dive into that. Why is it so hard for us as business owners to sell where for some people like yourself, it is so much more easier and maybe even a little bit more natural? Ah, hmm. is it natural though? I think it's learned. You know, I've been in sales a long time before running my own businesses. And I think it's a, it's an, it's a undervalued asset to be able to sell. Like it's a real, like it's so useful for our business, right? But so many people like launch their business or, or start their business from a real place of passion or expertise, but doesn't necessarily have the sales skills to like, really optimize opportunities and maximize rather than miss um you know miss opportunities and i think business owners like they give themselves a really hard time like they think oh i should know how to sell but you're like you were taught to become the accountant you learned you spent years honing your craft you spent so long developing that skill set why do you think you would wake up and just have all the tools strategies and confidence to to sell like it's a really I think people beat themselves up so much and the overwhelm the overthinking that that guilt they know they have to sell they hate it they don't want to appear like they're selling but it's a real invisible skill you know like do it well you come off the phone and be like oh I've just spent thousands of pounds and I didn't feel sold to at all that's the mark of a really great seller yeah. and the people who are really bad at selling you're like oh that was really pushy 
oh that was really uncomfortable that what horrible conversation and it's not nice for the seller and it's not nice for the buyer mm. so I think people feel uncomfortable with it because they've never been shown how and therefore why would they expect anything different yeah I love how you say that you know because I think a lot of people have this um, phrase that I've just used here on purpose by the way that it just comes naturally but I love the way you say it because it isn't something that you're born with it is a skill that you've got to learn and I want everybody here listening to this episode to understand this that you know if you have started a business and you had to learn so much from starting that business and growing it understand as well that with that selling is a skill that you need to learn and it's almost kind of like a basic requirement as well. <laughs> no, yeah. I think there's a real like thought like, oh, that oh, just the few can sell really comfortably, or or it's a luxury, or you know, but it's not a luxury, it's an absolute essential. It yeah. is the bedrock of your success. Like you're selling your ideas, you're selling your products, you're selling your brand, you're selling your vision, like all the time, right? Like in every conversation, you're selling something, even if you're trying to just convince your children, come on, we're going to do this. You're you're communicating the value of why it's worth doing that so you can get that. But unfortunately, it's a little bit more complicated than (laughs) than just telling your kids to wear the shoes on. Um, But but that's the thing. I mean, uh, I kind of use this as an analogy or as an example sometimes with my clients. And it's like, you know, how many times have you recommended a restaurant to a friend or how many times did you recommend a book to somebody? Yes, it's not selling, but it's the same principle. And, you know, once you kind of, once you're comfortable with just recommending, well, why don't you recommend your services as well? And all your products for that matter. And it's just that mindset behind the whole entity of, you know, it is, it is something that is a basic requirement and it is a skill that you can learn, but you've got to do it. Yeah, we've also been told from a very young age sort of not to Mm self-promote, you know, like, oh, don't, oh, just turn it down. Just, you know, don't, oh, just, just calm down, you know, just hold yourself back. That that, There's this slight hesitation to be like really upfront about what you're trying to achieve and what, what you're really brilliant at. You know, people say play to your strengths and then you're like, well, what the hell are they? You know, because we've spent, you know, and then we're like, don't be a jack of all trade but then you're trying to learn all these things you know it's 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 definitely a mindset um thing as much as it is skill because you can have as much skill in in the world and then not have any confidence to deploy that skill so yeah yeah this yeah. is what I love and this is what I help women with every day, basically. I know, and I can just see your eyes sparkling just talking about it. Let's talk about the energy behind selling. Um, you know, this is this is one of the things that I talk a lot with, in particular to my clients as well, when it comes to selling. And I'm sure you do as well, because there's the right kind of energy you need to have when it comes to selling your products and services. What is your take on that? And what do you kind of share or what would you like to share with the audience here to kind of help them understand that concept Mm. I think it goes back right back to basics with regard to having the belief that your product your service the thing that you're selling will ultimately be of massive value to your end client if you truly believe that what you sell matters that it's important that it will transform somebody else's life help them care for them for the better then how you feel about the thing that you sell really changes your energy you can speak positively empowered and with you know empowered to talk like really compellingly about the thing that you sell so I feel like before you can have energy around selling you need to have clarity on on what what it is you're selling and and how you're going to go about about yeah delivering that buying experience that you know that sales process sales funnel buying experience it's a journey that we take lead our clients through but for me I'm a massive believer in like positivity yeah exploring not not worrying about failure particularly like thinking about a, a business like an experiment a lot will not really work that well but you won't know until you try so you you try you persist I'm gonna get to this in a minute you you persevere you try that again you you see what works you see what resonates and you you 
focus and hone in on the things that are working well and shed the strategies that don't work for you. But unless you try, you will never filter out what is working for your business. And there's a lot of trial and error. And obviously with sales training and and working with business coaches, you're minimizing the failures and maximizing the the opportunities and and the positive ripple effect that 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 brings. Yeah. And I love how you bring that in because with the clarity also comes confidence. The more clarity you have, the more confident you are, number one, in you delivering whatever it is that you're selling, but also you've got confidence in that product and service. Um, And I think that is one of the biggest things because I always say... (laughs) I'm quoting so much from from when I talk to my clients, but I always say that the number one thing is, is when you show up just to sell, just show up with confidence. That's the number one thing. Show up with confidence. Mm. And with that, you can then um, lead and help somebody to make an educated decision to buy from you or not. And also remember, like you said, business is a challenge, you know, enjoy the challenge of it. If somebody says yes to you, amazing. If somebody says no to you, that's also fine. But I think a lot of us get hooked up on what if they say no? And then you're going to be classified as a failure. And that's where all of those beliefs and those blocks come in again. There's so much that we can do, though, to put frameworks behind our conversations, put frameworks behind our process so we don't get like confused at every moment in these different touch points with our with our selling and also you know people come to me and say I want to you know they they don't necessarily say they want to be well they sort of do say they want to be more confident but the confidence is a byproduct yeah the confidence is a byproduct to the clarity to knowing how much to charge to you know to to know the product ladder to know what you sell inside out so when somebody asks you a question you're not just like Oh my God, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe I should change it. Like, shall I do that? Shall I, do... you know, and that's where your confidence just erodes instantly. Yeah. Whereas if you've got like this, this anchor of clarity, like it is clarity. One of my like little uh, formulas is, oh, I've written it backwards here. That does not help me. <laughs> you know, clarity, <laughs> confidence and clarity attracts commitment. Yeah. And it does. And so you've got to you've got to be able to rely on yourself to be able to sell. And if you can rely on yourself to sell, you will be confident. Yeah. You know, the confidence is the comes afterwards. Exactly. Exactly. And hey, once you've done that, you say, hey, I've done it once. I can do it again and again and again. That's and it. that's where the ball just starts rolling and you just see everything starting to fall in place. Do you know what I've got? What I've I've likened a lot of things to now is like, you know, when you make pancakes, you always you're supposed to like throw away the first one. Right. Yeah. So I'm just like, God, doesn't matter. Just practice, practice, practice. Yeah. It doesn't matter because with practice comes perfection. Although I am a big believer in not pursuing perfection because actually it's a hope, hopeless endeavor. Nobody ever gets perfect. And, then, and you know, good enough, just crack on. You know what I mean? <laughs> there's, there's so many. In fact, I should put that as one of my tips that I'm going to share with you is l- literally the ability to take action will yeah. is, is the biggest asset that you can, that you can yeah. have as a person. I agree. I agree. And heck, who throws away the first pancake? I always eat it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the kids would be like, what? <laughs> but that is, so, in, in, that's what they used to say. Yeah, exactly. So let's talk a little bit, um, you know, from your experience. And obviously you've been in sales like in forever. So you, I, I kind of classify you as one of the top people to go to when it comes to selling. Because of your experience and because of all the knowledge you've gained over the years, now in particular with the business that you've created, which I've just seen evolve over the last two years, coming two years, can you share with us some, let's say five tips that the audience can now start implementing here in order to, shall we say, elevate that skill or get that skill or just start putting something together so that they can start getting more comfortable with selling and obviously just going out there and making a difference for others and for themselves. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. So I've got my five tips, but I've actually got a a bit of a side tip here, which is if you don't know how to do something, get help. Literally, like if you want to speed up, you've got to get the help that you need. And I will share these tips, but ultimately 
it's about implementing those those tips and actually getting the help to make those tips relevant to your own business so i hope these help and i'm going to start at the beginning where i started last year and um and that was growing my audience really really intentionally when i started this business um yeah just over a year and a half ago i had no audience no product and no pricing strategy no strategy whatsoever um and i thought what comes first the chicken or the egg what comes first the product or the audience i thought if i had the most amazing product in the world i wouldn't have anybody to sell it to so i thought right i'm going to sort grow the audience and use my audience building as a market research tool so i asked them every day what do you think of this what do you think of that what's your pain point what do you need help with what do you hate about selling and with that engagement the the everything happened at once you know business isn't really like like what think like one dimensional it's really yeah. multi-layered like a lot of things are happening at a lot of lot a lot of time at the same time sorry so anyway i think i built my facebook community which is the business lounge which is free and everyone is um welcome to join and i intentionally grew that space into being a really really vibrant sales focused fun and you know it's a great community for a free community it's a really safe place and um and yeah i did loads of market research <laughs> in there so yeah, then i could yeah. create and develop a product range that was tailored specifically for the pain points that my audience was experience and i think what the mistake a lot of people make is think that their reputation is sort of outside of them whereas actually you can build your reputation and your audience really intentionally by deciding like, what do you want to be known for yes make it known demonstrate it talk about it share it you know really share your own journey as well like a lot of businesses will feel really bad that they're small you know that they're a small one-man band but actually their ideal client might find that really inspiring and just like the opposite of intimidating you know like some businesses are really corporate and intimidating and scary and and faceless and and us small business owners we have that yeah we get what all big businesses are trying to get back you know a, a voice and a and yeah. a and a closeness with the client whereas we have it just just there just it's there for the taking so we need to build our reputation really intentionally be really clear what you want to be known for make yourself memorable look by happy accident i mean it's not happy accident now because i do it i'm like oh everything that's blue and pink and colorful <laughs> i'm like a magpie so you know you need to be memorable you need to be able to yeah. have like a signature brand and a signature look and a signature message like all these things are really cohesive and um and it takes time it takes time to perfect it takes time to work it out for yourself and feel around for what you stand for but it's important yeah i agree with you 100 on on all the levels um you know building that audience is the number one thing i did as well thankfully without even knowing i was doing the right thing at that point <laughs> i started doing it but i had a very interesting conversation actually with a potential client who found me on google in new york Ooh. and they're looking for a business coach and she actually said to me that they were also they also had a conversation with a bigger coaching company within the states mm. but they said that and this was her word she said i like the fact that you're a personal brand because number mm. one it was quicker to reach out to you you were quicker to respond and i love the fact that you're tailoring everything to our requirements and it doesn't feel like it is this big company corporate thing mm. and it's exactly what you're just saying there and when she said it I did feel like actually I'm quite proud of that you know because yeah, I right. did work hard to build my business up as a one-man band yeah. but I'm not shy for putting it out there so I think for yeah. everybody here in the audience don't be shy if you've got a small business if you're a one-man band build your audience around who you are and Absolutely. put your brand out there just be you I love that we're just going to be like, that's exactly what I was thinking, Henry. And, that, that, you know, like to own it is so yes. empowering to pretend to be bigger than you are, to pretend that you're more successful than you are, to pretend that you're more polished, crisp and professional than you are. Actually, you know, we talk about um, selling with authenticity, yes. but the opposite is um, is to be selling artificially. 
yes. which I hate. Oh my God, like that doesn't fit right, does it? We don't want to be artificial by trying to be authentic. Like mm. it doesn't, it's effortless. Just, just be yourself, own it, be absolutely comfortable with your imperfections and your size and where you're at, because yeah. actually that will be, you know, very often our ideal client are a version of us, just a few paces behind. So actually you don't want to be really disconnected to what that person's looking for. 100%. And there are plenty, plenty of clients for you and your business. Absolutely yeah. an abundance of clients. So just, yeah, be intentionally you, build your reputation, own it and get cracking. That's my first point. I've got many more. I, got <laughs> I just want to say, we, we just covered one there, didn't we? There's quite a few more to come. I'll rush. I'll get through the others. Okay, so what is number two then? What is the second tip that you want to share with the audience? All right, this is an important one. And it is super simple and crazy complicated at the same time. So as a business owner, you've got to know what you sell. Like, seriously, people are like, oh, I've got this product and then this and then it does that. And then I'm like, no, that's not what you sell. What is the other? What sits the other side of that product? What do the clients get? What? transformation that they receive from working with you and people get either they're sure of the results and don't know how to package it into a product mm -hmm. or product ladder or they have a really slick product ladder and are really hazy on the purpose of it yes. so actually knowing what you sell and how to package it in such a way that is easy it just flies off the shelf yes is really important and it is easier said than done which is why actually if you need help you go and get the help because you waste so much time trying to trying to perfect it by yourself you know exactly. and the best get help the best absolutely get help yeah and you know what i love that as well because that's the number one thing when i have conversations with people one of the things i ask them is like tell me about your products or your services and the one thing i listen out to and this is now for everybody who wants to know this is do you know what it is that you're selling and can you can you articulate it you yeah. know can you actually tell me in such a way that is enticing me to go oh this is good stuff this is what i've been looking for and in most occasions i do find that people can't do that so that's no. the number one thing that needs to be worked on is creating that package or that product that is so enticing for people that they just lean in and go where have you been all my life this is what i want <laughs> And also yeah, right. with that, you know, thinking about the value that you're adding, which is where a lot of people, again, struggle with. Do I put my prices up? Do I put my prices down? And that's another conversation we can have <laughs> on a completely different podcast episode. But, you know, that's also one of those things when you look at what it is that you sell. Do you have clarity? Yeah, well, exactly. And if you don't, who does? If you, you know, if you're unclear, you're, you're, Customers are most definitely unclear. Um, well, I was going to say something then. It's like, it's gone. It'll come back to me and I'll have to just <laughs> interrupt you in a minute. Is it because my dog just started barking and he completely yeah. confused us? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, Henriette, your dog's barking. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly muted myself there. Um, but no, I, I agree with you. And, um, you know, the product ladder is another thing to think about. But again, so many people go, do I go up? Do I go down? What does that look like? How do they uh, make from your, one another? Your pricing is absolutely like fundamentally linked to your ability to position it. Like, is it worth paying for? Well, as you said, can you articulate why it's worth paying for? If not, yeah. then no, you can't put your pricing up. If you have a great branding, got amazing social proof, your results are unquestioned, you can articulate what you sell. The experience of working with you is such a joy. Then this is when you can start thinking about putting your pricing up. You can't just be like, oh, I'll put my pricing up <laughs> you know you've got to be able to communicate as to why why it's worth paying for and ultimately yeah. that's what selling is yes. you know 100 percent. what is the third tip that you want to share with us today <laughs> so this is also really really simple and also quite difficult to do but it is to tell people what you deliver because mm. actually that visibility piece is really really daunting especially if you don't know what you're really trying to say or really what you're trying, what you stand for or what your brand looks like, what you're supposed to wear, how you're supposed to like position yourself. But ultimately you can't be a really good kept secret. You've 
got to make it known. It's a numbers game. Business is fundamentally a numbers game. The more people that know you, the more people who understand what you offer, the more people that can see you as some like a like a a really reputable reputable contributor in your industry, then you know the, the more clients you're going to get. Frankly, you know yeah. it's really simple. So you've got to tell people about the, the the results that you deliver, and then put a megaphone to it, and use as many platforms as you can. From social media is totally free. Being a podcast guest, you know, going and borrowing people's audiences in various different ways, um, showcasing your amazing self and and your amazing clients, you know, just share, 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 and um, don't do it once, do it every day. Yeah, and I think it beautifully links into that first tip that you gave as well about just being you, yeah. apart from building your audience number one, but just showing up authentically building your brand around that and then I think yes no this third step you'll find it'll be so easy just to go out there and become more visible because again you're authentic you're not doing it artificially everything is just going to be a lot more easy to have and to grow that visibility yeah and I'll just add in here by the way that everybody's absolutely terrified to begin with yeah everybody starts with a fraction of the confidence that they later gain being visible present and trying to carve up a space for yourself like the amount that you're going to have to bulldoze through mindset wise what are people going to think I'm not sure I don't want to go live I don't even know how to go live I don't know how to use the different like platforms I don't know how they're going to be a relentless like a relentless amount of like obstacles and to challenge through, to think that you can do it alone. It's kind of crazy, actually, you know? And so if you're think, if anybody's listening, thinking, oh my God, I'm totally overwhelmed. I can't do that. I'm like, yeah, because it's really, really, really hard. Like the confidence I have now is because I was unconfident before and just sort of cracked through it every, as well, yeah, every day when I didn't want to. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, the uncomfortable becomes comfortable. The impossible becomes possible the you know the no sales become sales it's it grows um but it's hard but you do still have to do the work you still do have to tell people what you do (laughs) like it or not yeah 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 and I think this is where a lot of people get confused with, um you know personal branding or just a business brand Mm. is do I show up you know as part of the business or do I just show up personally and and I would always just say just show up you know, even if you have a business, if you have a business brand, but personally, you need to show up as well because it's the face behind the brand that people connect with, not just the Absolutely. brand. The, I mean, the personal brand exists regardless. Mm-hmm. It's just whether or not you're leveraging it. Like your yes. reputation, like at the school gate, in your family, with your friends, in business circles, the reputation is there whether you like it or not. So that's basically your brand that's basically your personal brand so I would say by not leveraging it you're kind of missing a trick that is actually quite an empowered move to just be just own it like I said and you can be a different entity to your business you are not your business you are uh, you are you might be the front of it the face of it but it they are separate entities but they complement each other so well so why not Mm -hmm. you know why why would you not leverage your own personal brand or and and enjoy it Mm -hmm. yes I agree what is the fourth tip that you have on your Mm -hmm. list because I love these I think these are golden nuggets everybody is just making crazy notes I'm hoping (laughs) right now (laughs) I love it when look I've got a pen in my hand and I'm taking notes on our own podcast (laughs) Danielle I'm I'm just taking notes honestly if yeah if you have seen mine (laughs) it's crazy as well (laughs) that's it that's the joy of learning isn't it actually that's not a tip but it should be like enjoy the process of progress like it's hard it's a challenge it's it's learning it's growth it's meant to be stretching and and uncomfortable at times but anyway number four um we've kind of covered this but I'm going to put it down in a point show people who you are and what you stand for so really know your values and if you don't know this and I certainly didn't know this they were maybe in their like rough form forever but I hadn't really thought of like polishing them but as time goes on they're getting easier to define 
it's getting easier for me to realize what's important to me like like experimentation and enjoyment are absolutely key to me I don't do it if it's boring and I don't do it if it doesn't make me happy so you know um those are my core core values and encouragement you know like what do you stand for find them and hone them and enjoy them and share them because that's what authenticity is you know like be authentic I mean what the hell does that mean actually it is about demonstrating and living your values so others can it's almost like a magnet do you know what I mean yeah absolutely and it's so true because you know I I kind of didn't know what I stood for and what my values were in the beginning. I just know that this is the journey I wanted to go on. I wanted to start my own business. I'm going to be a coach and this is what I'm going to do. So I kind of had an idea, but it's that journey of discovering yourself, honing in on those skills, learning how to sell. All of those things that you learn as you grow is just phenomenal. And it is such an amazing journey to be on. I mean, come on, we're living in the most amazing times on this planet Earth. And for us not to catch up, capture this and to take on these opportunities that are available for us. Oh my goodness. Why not? Why don't you oh, want to, I know. Want to, we can't want wait. to do that? I know. I know. Oh, I know. And um, do you know what? When I lost my travel business and when I say lost, I mean, it's back up and running now, which is, is great, but I lost it for a time and it meant that I had to take a totally different direction. And, and it was, it was awful. It was so, it was like the carpet had been pulled out of my, under my feet. I remember being really sad and just like, you know, you grieve for that business. You built a business and it's gone. And I felt really devastated and like flat out lost my income, which was rubbish, really rubbish. And and this was an opportunity, I'm saying like inverted commas, but opportunities don't look like opportunities. They look like impossible challenges. So if something seems like an impossible challenge, maybe just question it rather than shying away from it. Like, actually, is this a good moment to try and like climb that mountain and see mm-hmm. what's on top? And like now looking back, I'm like, wow, I was so fortunate to be stopped in my tracks because I didn't have to make a decision to change, which that's difficult. But yeah, it did not look like an opportunity. Yeah. It looked like absolute pain, pain and challenge, basically. But, you know, look where it got me. So exactly exactly you know I always say that your um your gut will tell you what the right steps are if it feels Mm -hmm. right go for it if your instinct is telling you it's the right decision go for it the problem is it lies how to listen to our gut (laughs) (laughs) I think I'm not sure I totally agree on some level but sometimes I'm like the gut gut feelings often it's to protect you Mm -hmm. and actually we are really good at keeping ourselves safe and and comfortable whereas actually the things that keep us com- comfortable are often a little bit bad for us and actually you know we've kind of got to sometimes go in a little bit the other direction as long as it's still aligned with you you, yes. you know what you're trying to do but yeah it is trust your gut but question it sometimes as well just in case <laughs> <What> are you <laughs> trying to show me what is the last step that you've got out of the five then yeah well actually we've touched on this as well and it is do you know what it is the ability to persist, persevere and perfect is absolutely what what marks a successful business. We are, failure is coming our way, right? Definitely. It's inevitable. <laughs> Challenge is coming our way. So flex those muscles, get cracking and persist, persevere. It's like Tetris. Do you know what I mean? Yes. You know, and you just become really good and fast at it and to take action just persevere progress over perfection every day but just carry on and literally get help yeah it is I've you know I get help I got loads of help now um got personal trainer even though I know how to what I need to do technically but it's not easy is it still got to get help with the basic stuff I've got a business coach you know business coaches are a lifeline to a small business but and sales training hand in hand is like you just then you need help with branding then you need help with the VA and then you need your tribe your other women you know your other businesses that your your cheerleaders when well you know when when things get hard and so yeah persist persevere absolutely own what you're what you're about know what you're about 
and yes. learn to sell. Yes. Number one, learn how to sell. Um, you know, just as one last tip on that. I, uh, I was working in the interior de- design industry before. And one of those elements where they said to me, do you want to, do you want to go into the sales department and sell? And I was like, oh, I'll give it a try. I hated it. I really <laughs> did not like it. But only because I didn't understand, I didn't hone in on or or go and figure out what is selling all about, really. Mm. And I just failed miserably. I was like, nope, nope, nope. I'm good at this is my skill set. This is what I'm doing. And it was fine. And obviously, you know, it was amazing. And I loved my job. But then many years later, starting my own business, I was like, damn, now I've got to sell. And memories didn't like it. And then obviously all of those kind of things came in. But then like you said, as soon as I realized that it is just a skill you need to learn, everything else just became so much easier. Yeah. It's a skill with a really scary negative title. And it doesn't need to be. No. It is actually so rewarding. It's really enjoyable. It's a lovely process. Like I really, really enjoy my clients. I love talking to them. I love helping them. And and that's it, right? Although it's not just talking because you've got to convert and like yes. lead and be assertive but that's not negative it's actually a real it it's a real a beautiful process experience. Yeah. it's a wonderful process but um yeah. you know people hate it which is why um well, well, well we can turn it around they need to come and talk to you <laughs> well this is it absolutely danielle <laughs> why do i keep calling you danielle it's, it's, it's my special. last name it's fine it confuses yeah. people i know <laughs> I know you're com- Henriette perfectly, and I called you Danielle. <laughs> uh, you know what? <laughs> it's because, no, I know why. It's because my name is at the bottom of the screen, and the first thing that captures people's attention is the D. And yeah, yeah. immediately they just go Daniel or, yeah. uh, or Danielle getting- or whatever. It's like, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Anyway, listen, you've got your business lounge, which you mentioned earlier on, and this is available for all of you here right now and listening to this episode or watching this video. And you're thinking, how do I learn this skill? How do I get comfortable with selling? My suggestion is that you dive into the business lounge and, um, you know, why don't you tell them a little bit more about the business lounge as to what they can get there? I know I'm part of it. I'm there as well myself. But why don't you share with them a little bit as to what it is that they can get in there and how it can help them? Yeah, absolutely. So the business lounge is on Facebook. It is my free group. It's a community of ambitious women in business ready to achieve and achieve more. Um, I think of it as my business showroom so people can come and get a real proper taste and feel like the resources in there are good quality. There's a lot of great stuff that I put in the business lounge for people to really get comfortable with what it might be like to work with me. And then when they're ready, they come into one of my programs, Elevate Circle or Amplify or something like that. But the first step is to come into the business lounge on Facebook. So I'll see you there. Yes, absolutely. So the link is below in my show notes. Go and join, sign up. Um, If you have any questions and you would like to connect with Enfys, by all means, uh, the details for her LinkedIn page will also be in the show notes and her website. So either way, get in touch with her if you have any more questions. And I'm sure she'd be more than happy to have a chat with you. But oh my gosh, Enfys, we could have gone on for hours and still talk about this because, you know, there's so many elements and I'm like, oh, that could be a great podcast episode as well. And we we need to touch up on this topic too. But let's just keep it there. Let's not overwhelm everybody. Um, And thank you so much for taking the time and being here. And, you know, I'm glad that we finally got made this happen, basically, got this episode together, which I think is going to be of great value. Absolute pleasure. It's always very nice to speak to you Henriette <laughs> yeah especially anyway. since I've been up since four o'clock in the morning so um this really You're brightened so up my brave. day you are so brave but listen no thank you again from the bottom of my heart and you and I are going to touch base very soon again